Hey, hey, it's showtime, guys. Good to see uh, everybody already. Wow, I can see uh, Chris and uh, Timothy. Yep, they are on their way. Uh, Malt Muser, my uh, buddy, uh, partner in crime, just uh, finished uh, probably up on his um, happy hour, we'll say. And uh, that reminds me, let me get over a little invite on the side here. So hopefully you guys are having a good uh, Tasty Tuesday. What are you uh, sipping? Hopefully you've got a Highland Park to enjoy. Uh, we did say we we're going to do a decent show tonight, but uh, Eric's been, uh, Malt's been, you know, moving across the country. And uh, unfortunately, uh, he has been, uh, had a little snafu where some of this stuff hasn't arrived uh, at a, at the destination yet so we had to postpone the old deanston show but hey who's complaining I'm, there's no bitch in here right <laughs> y'all are funny yep the whiskey family i really appreciate you guys stopping uh, uh stopping by and uh, just send him all this invite, so he should be here around here in a little bit. Yeah, we were going to look at the Deanston Virgin Oak and uh, a special one that he had. But he just moved from uh, Philadelphia to Chicago, uh, and uh, some of the stuff isn't ready yet. So he asked me if we could do something a little different, and I'm like, sure, what you have in mind? And um, I think he picked up pretty good bottles. Uh, it's been a while since I've, I've had these. Um, if you remember back, uh, I guess it's been about three, at least three, if not four years ago, these came out. And uh, we're talking about the 17 year dark and light from Highland Park. The dark and the light were special uh, releases, we'll say. I wouldn't call them, lim you know, limited necessarily. There's 28,000 bottles per uh, release each on these. So, you know, when, when you get above, like, to me, when you get above like 5,000 bottles, it's kind of hard to call something limited, but you know, it's, it's never a perfect science. <laughs> is the dark actually darker than the light or is it just the bottle that's darker? It actually is darker. And we'll get into the, uh, the details here about the, um, the big difference is really, uh, the, the dark came out first, I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, I want to say it was around, I'm trying to remember what the exact year was. If anybody remembers, maybe 2017. I'm thinking. Let me see if I let me uh, do a little uh, quick uh, bring up here. I try not to look at too many notes right beforehand because I don't want to be swayed by you know other people's uh, findings in their whiskey uh, journey. I don't want to. Not to say they're incorrect or not to say that it doesn't help, you know, maybe find something sometimes, but your initial look at something, uh, or if you haven't, you know, messed with it in a while, you want to kind of not be swayed or persuaded either way. This was 2017, yeah. December uh, 2017 on the dark. And I think the light came out about a year or at least a few months after that. I'm pretty sure. Let me see if I can uh, get a definite release date. May of 2018. So there you go. So May of 2018 was the uh, the light release. And ironically, the dark came out before the light. The funny thing is, you would think, I don't know, maybe not, but... Usually you would think you would release a light and then a dark, but I, I guess it doesn't really matter <laughs> if they're good. It doesn't matter what they're called or what they are. Speaking of being called something. <laughs> it's always dark before the dawn, right? That's hey. the whole thing. You see what Highland Park was trying to say? They were trying to infuse you with some optimism, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, well played, but I always, I always rooted for the empire. <laughs> uh, you would, you would have. I, I, dun, this is not dun, surprising. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, <laughs> you are Darth Vader, which makes me, I guess, Luke Skywalker or something. Which I don't know if I'm comfortable being. <laughs> <laughs> you could be Ray if you want to be. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I would pick Han Solo as my. I, mean, I don't know how well 
or how politically correct I could impersonate a black woman at this point. So, you know, I'm just going to not do that. I'll pick Han Solo. It, that would be my pick. Han Solo. There you go. Uh, or rogue, actually, yes. Boba Fett. I might have to pick Boba Fett because oh, I like right. the accent. Yeah, yeah. I could do both. <laughs> how are you, Telex? Pretty decent, man. Pretty decent. Better, uh, it sounds like, than your recent journey, but hopefully it's gotten better. I like the the, the, the place looks pretty massive from that angle. <laughs> it's not bad. Uh, my, most of my stuff has not arrived yet. Um, I, I withheld uh, the full story, which you are privy to. Uh, I withheld it on my happy hour and, and uh, will happily at some point in time tonight uh, share the whole sordid tale uh, if we decide we want to do that. But <laughs> uh, Long story short, yes, I am alive. I am here in uh, Chicago, Illinois, and uh, eager to get into the – I have poured out the Highland Park light in a glass on the assumption that that's the first one we were going to do, which I'm guessing that that's the case, right? Yeah, I think you. I think you picked uh, wisely on this one. I don't think there's really a wrong way. Technically, you could go. They're both pretty high ABV, but I thought the sherry probably would be a little bit more, uh, ever, you know, more um, filled the uh, clouding up the palate. So yeah, I, I would go with the American oak first before the uh, European sherry. But so good, good, good pick on that one. Okay. <laughs> so, Telex, have you? Um... Have you picked up anything new since the last time we talked? Yeah, I well, I pulled the tr well, I put, picked up and pulled the trigger. <laughs> I've I've uh, had a, a really good luck with a few finds. Let me bring up the old. Uh, and I'm sorry for uh, running a little behind. I I was playing yeah. a video, I was playing yeah. a video game with my daughter, and it and it ended up taking a lot longer How than I thought. <laughs> How dare you put your parenting ahead of ahead of our whiskey show, Kelly? What is this? I'm slapping my hand. I, I, I literally I, I need the East Coast, and you're just falling apart, man. Do I need to come back out there? No, it's all it's all good. I did pick up a really interesting. Hopefully, you'll find it nice. We'll we'll find out later. But the uh, Ardmore Twenty, I've been trying to find a really good Ooh. Ardmore in a, a, a distillery bottle, and they have like the legacy, and they had like a ten year, but they didn't really have anything old recently. But I found a, a, a one that you can still find for a reasonable price. We'll talk about later the Ardmore Twenty, which is a peated dram, which I was shocked to know. I didn't know that Ardmore had a peated offering like that at oh, that yeah. age. So it'll be fun to look at. And then I also, even though I had the Dalmore 15 already, I wanted to do something a little older, but I didn't want to go crazy. And I, I, I definitely don't believe in spending 25 year prices for Dalmore. But the 18, I, I've had my eye on for a while. And when the price went up on it, I put the brakes on solid. I, I didn't get it for, for many years. And then finally, I'm thinking, I found it, I found it for a really great price. So I thought, yeah, I'll pull the trigger on that one. So I picked up the uh, the Dalmore 18, and we'll have uh, Dalmore 18. a few I'm more. Stoked to try that. And on the side, uh, I snagged up a Kleinleash 14 that's on its way, and a uh, Cardew 18. And then the oh. last one was the. Um, whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> you said, hang on, hang on. You got a Dalmore 18, and then you said a Kleinleash 14, and a what 18? A Cardu, C A R D H U. Yeah, yeah, okay. Damn. Not one of my favorite distilleries, but they they had a reasonable price for it, and I thought, well, you know. And then last but not least was the um, the uh, Dalmany Fifteen. I've been trying to get like the uh, reasonable the price, but trying to yeah get a reasonable age from all the the distillery bottles I can before I move on to independent bottlings, which will take place you know after we get through all these, but. Yeah, it's wow. pretty crazy. All right, man, you got some, you got yourself a couple things. Went, couple went a little two, nuts this bottles. month. <laughs> a couple two three bottles. Well, went went a little nuts this this time, but the other ones won't, won't be here for a while. Probably a couple weeks. But what about you, man? Yeah. Um, a couple things. Um, the big one. Our bag, Trivan. Batch two. Nice, nice. I found it for a criminal price of $230. And that so is very I well done. I had to buy it. I had to. It was a moral obligation. 
At that uh, price, that I would definitely a, snag it. Definitely. That's normally a three to three hundred twenty-five dollar bottle. As far as I understand, oh yeah, uh, so I, I decided to do it. Um, uh, I well, I got a bottle of Booker's, uh, the latest Booker's release, which is a bourbon. Um, nice. With some folks on the channel, which is very nice. Um, I got a a couple actually on the bourbon side. I got a Rabbit Hole, which is a, a new Kentucky distillery, relatively new, and it's um, uh, it's a it's a PX cherry finish. I haven't oh. opened it yet. I think this is going to be a real interesting one, and and might provide a really interesting kind of uh, bourbon finish, cherry finished opportunity for us to do in the future. Um, I got a Tamdu batch strength number three. Uh, wow. as you know, I love Tamdu batch strength. I same uh, here. Five, I was singing the praises. I got a I got a number three relatively recently. Um, I think that's it. Actually, been, let me just. You've been moving, so I don't I don't blame yeah, you there. I mean, yeah. I, well, I mean, I picked up a Turkey One Hundred and One today because there you go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Gotta have one, I guess. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, when in Rome, I mean, how, how can you really live without a bottle of Turkey 101 sitting around? Uh, yeah, so I got one of those. I, that's, I think that's it. But yeah, the, the, the re oh, I forgot. Uh -oh. J. Henry Wisconsin bourbon. It is a five year old bourbon. Um, it's the mash bill is primarily from a heirloom red corn, which was designed at the University of Wisconsin. Wow. So of course, I've been looking for this for years, but I've been living on the East Coast. So, of course, I go into Finney's today, and there it is. And I'm like, oh, well, I need to just finally buy it. So we'll see We'll see how that turns out. But, yeah, that's, that's the extent of it for me, man. Um, nothing else really uh, – you know, obviously that art bag, that art bag is is the real winner. Now, I do have two other things that I've purchased, but they haven't arrived yet. And I think both of these are going to be things you will be very interested in. That's cool. Another thing to remind the guys of: I sent Eric a, a Trevon batch one, so we can do like a kind of a a sample of both to see if we can discern anything different from the two different batches. Hopefully they're both really good and not that much of a variation, but you never know right. what you might get with some of these. Cause why bother doing a batch one, batch two, batch three, if they're all the same and why not just call them what it is and just do a regular release like the Ugadala and Corey of and things like that, I guess. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so by this time next week, I'll have two other things that I think are going to be really uh, pique your interest. One is a Kalila 25. Oh, yes. <laughs> I Maybe you saw... Did you buy that recently? Because I had my eye on this one. It was a great, great, unbelievable price. I was about to pull the trigger and I thought, I'll just wait like a day or two. I'll go back and it's gone. Could that yeah, have been you? I'm guessing it was the same website. Was it the Whiskey Exchange? Yeah, I think it yeah. might have been. So that's <laughs> yeah. the it was I you. Thought. I bought that it. was you that bought that. Yes, I, I stole that from under your under your uh, fingers there, man. But I paired it with something else, which I think is going to be really interesting. It is a Glenn Farkless 21, which, again, if you've had the 25 standard release, blah. This one is bottled at like 54%, and it is a uh, whiskey exchange exclusive. So oh, a nice! Year old Glenn Farkless bottle that almost cast strength. That sounds. I mean, good. right? Much, I, had to, I had to find something else to justify the insane shipping costs that the whiskey exchange. Uh, uh, yeah, seventy-five pounds flat is to me. That's <laughs> why I was hesitant. That's the only yeah. reason I didn't buy. Like I would have got that Kalila twenty-five honestly if it wasn't for the shipping charges. Yeah, and that's <laughs> why. That's why I added this Glenn Farkless because I was like, you know what? Like, I have to figure out a way to average this out a bit. Um, How much do they want for that Glenn Farkless 21? It was like, I mean, USD, it's like 180. That's not bad for a cast strength version, man. Mm -hmm. I, I'm yeah, tempted to get one had myself. A 5, which was like $35 more. And I, I was just like, you know what, man? I, was the 25 also cast strength too? Yeah, but it was, it was lower ABV, which makes sense. 
Uh, oh, okay. I, I didn't. I was just like, you know what? Uh, I, I didn't love it. The, the Glenn Fork was twenty five. I've never had a twenty one. So I said, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna get the twenty one." Yeah, no, I don't. I don't blame you there. I hear you, man. Which, in hindsight, was a good decision. Uh, you know, <laughs> based on what you know about my weekend, which we'll. Talk oh about. yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, man! Well, you didn't tell me any details. I just know that you had a delay on some of your oh, stuff. That's all I know. So, all right. <laughs> while our Highland Park waits, um, I'll make this. I'll, I'll I'll give you the. I'll be brief. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> so, uh, I got my car tuned up. I drive a manual transmission car. I got it tuned up. Got it all fixed up. It was like you know a bunch of stuff. Getting ready for a trip drive from Philly. To Chicago, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I spent like fifteen hundred bucks. You know, new boots, new fucking uh, uh, on the axles, bunch of stuff needed to be done. So I'm all rare and ready to go. Most of my stuff has been shipped via a shipping company for my move. So my car is just packed with everything else that I needed for the last two weeks, which was a lot, apparently. So I'm driving along, driving down the highway. You know, I. Get through Pennsylvania, I get into Ohio, I'm riding in cruise control for two and a half hours. And then I pull over, uh, I pull over to get gas, and all of a sudden I notice my clutch is like limp. Oh no. And I'm like, now I replaced my clutch about five years ago, so I'm like, and I don't drive that much, so I'm thinking to myself, like, huh, the fuck is this? Be okay, you would think. The only way I could just get it back into gear, I get it back on the freeway. On the Ohio Turnpike, right? And now I'm about 30 miles outside Cleveland to the west. Uh oh. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to pull off one more time just to make sure. And it is dead. Dead. Uh -oh. Nothing. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday. So I pay 150 bucks to get it towed to a shop. Right? Uh, they tell me, so I'm in Amherst, Ohio right now, right? Car oh, gosh. Is, Amherst, Ohio. It's three o'clock on a Friday. They're looking at it. They're like, yeah, your clutch, your master cylinder, your slave cylinder, they're just, they're gone. They're worn out, they're torched. Somehow, in two and a half hours of driving, in cruise control, not shifting, my clutch burned the fuck out. Oh, so, man. So I'm like, okay, they're open Saturday. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm going to get a shitty motel for two nights. I stay in some crappy Motel 6. There's crackheads. There's you know, It's a shithole. Oh, no. But I'm thinking to myself, ah, this is going to be a quick quick turnaround one night. <laughs> he calls me back, and he's like, the only place that's going to give us the part that I trust oh, is no. on Monday. Oh, dude. Jeez. So here I am in Amherst, Ohio. Uh, suddenly, I have already paid 1500 bucks to get my car fixed up and ready to go. Oh now my god. 1700 for a new clutch, a new master cylinder, a new slave cylinder plus $150 tow off the off the turnpike plus now 3 nights in a dumpy ass motel uh not far from the auto place. Finally. Damn, so I'm like I literally I spent the entire weekend in Amherst, Ohio, close to Whiskeyville, Ohio, but let me tell you, there ain't any <laughs> whiskey there. Uh <laughs> Finally, they get it done at 5 o'clock Eastern time on Monday. Oh, yes, wow. Monday. And so I white knuckle it. Five fucking hour drive. The other <laughs> half of my 11 hour drive to Chicago. I get here at 10 o'clock Central or 930 Central time last night. Oh, man. Unpack my car, which is filled with items. Doesn't say. I've, I've spent another $2,000 I didn't have. Oh, and man. Uh, here we are. But I'm here. Life is good. Uh, it's just money, apparently. Uh, <laughs> wow, man. And yeah, it was not pretty, man. I of all the things, you know, I, I it was like it was like I was punished for being dutiful. Here I am. I go. I I get the car checked out. I get all this stuff fixed to make sure there's no issues between Philly and Chicago. And what happens? My clutch just falls apart. You sound like you need a whiskey. <laughs> I've had it, believe me. I haven't had any in five days. I literally just... Oh, man. Well, yeah. uh, it was not fun, bro. 
I can imagine. I, I, I feel so free on that. We're alive. Life is good. It's behind me. I'll worry about that bill later. In the meantime, we have 17-year-old Highland Parks to drink. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do, man. And um, I guess I'll give you the little bit of the tail and let you uh, do your uh, yes. smelly, uh, tasty uh, things here in a second. <laughs> we'll start off with the light. And this is um, 17 years. And... Um, it's it's like I said, it's not really limited. It's one out of twenty eight thousand. So, I have the good news is I have seen these come down in price. The initial uh, price was around three hundred. These were released at. I have been seeing these being sold recently as low as two twenty five to two fifty. So if you you know are thinking about it, keep that in mind on the side that that it's definitely a lot lower uh, recently on some of these. If you still find what it, was have, oh, this one's going to be fifty two point nine percent 52.9 which is you know pretty much what i would consider cast strength i mean that's uh anything above 50 is is outstanding this is supposed to be um this is like the second release this came out after the dark this is 2018 the first one was december 29 uh 2017 this is 2018 release and um this is an american oak cast type that we're dealing with here uh, and that's it. There's no sherry. There's no other craziness going on. It's straight up single malt aged in American oak for 17 years. And uh, it's, you know, it comes with an ornate box, which, you know, if you're selling out that kind of money for whiskey, you would. Yeah, let's see this something. box. It's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. It, this, this is what it has on the side. Names them gave. They to noon and twilight, morning they named, and the waning moon, night and evening, the years to number. One of those uh, little quotes deals is from uh, Voluspa, the poetic, poetic uh, at a verse six. I guess it's just from uh, Jesus. some sort of uh, Norse calling it's got some it's it's this wood it's got a, kind of an engraving on the side it's, it's you know it's 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 a nice uh little uh, contraption it's got this funny lock on the side that you pull up and it the whiskey comes out of the top like that it kind of just slides down the bottom and then you just put it back and then you have your little latch on there and i usually keep it, it inside. i mean this is i mean that's as highland park as it gets right <laughs> pretty much the only great thing i think that, that the good thing about doing these elaborate cases with locks and stuff the only great thing about that is it keeps me out of the whiskey a little more than if it was easier accessible so it's kind of good for putting your more expensive stuff i guess locked away if, if you want to try to you know let it last for a little longer but that's that's all a really you know the only good thing about it <laughs> but there's a tell of the tape so have the honors of uh, going through the old motions. Thank you, sir. Um, I mean, this is a really, you know, special pour. I mean, we're looking at a basically a 17 year old cast strength Highland Park here. You know, normally our show, we try to do something that's very price accessible in the first hour, but this just pairs so well with this dark that it makes sense to do this in two. And so, boy, and I, since the price I, is coming I, down. Since the price is coming down to twenty five, it's you know for seventeen yeah. years, it's 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 still I, I still see see it being sold both the dark and the lights, so it's still out there available. We'll put it that way. Oh wow, so fresh! A lot of freshness, fresh apples, like fresh cut, fresh cut apple, like a honey crisp apple, something really special. Cinnamon. Apple pie, very nice touch of honey. So this is mostly sweet and spice is what I'm getting here. The spice is like the backbone. And again, it's, it's cinnamon, it's clove. You said this is ex-bourbon? This is American oak. Uh, okay, yeah. okay, that makes total sense. This is, a, this is an apple fritter in a glass, man. My God. Really nice. There's a little bit of that that honey heather, you know, thing you get from Highland Park, but it's very subtle. I appreciate the complexity of this. Florals too, starting to show up. Rose water, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. 
it's almost do you ever do you get any like and I'm not talking like that new crazy green banana, but like a nice ripe bin like a like a fresh banana at all in there? Uh maybe a little bit. not enough to like mixed yeah. with like a little bit of pineapple, maybe like an apple pineapple I think going for there. I mean, like a pineapple, what is that? Like the pineapple cake, the upside down cake. Yeah. That's what you want to pick up. I, not as much banana though. There is a like a nutty, there's a little bit of a nuttiness to it though. Wow, the nose on this is, it's really fantastic. I mean, it, it, it smells like a nice apple cinnamon crisp. You nailed it with the um, the freshness. It's, it definitely doesn't yeah, have any really like, fresh. it's not like a lot of dankness, even though it is aged and it's complex, all the notes are very like bright and, and like the, the, even the the wood is is like right there in your in not in a, in a bad way but just very bitey. Thank God that sweetness is there to kind of balance that out. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of powdered sugar in there. Huh. It's got a little bit of a. Huh. It's a good, it's a good um, is it nutmeg? Yeah, and like like a citrus orange in there too. Huh. It keeps changing, which is good. Every time I'm going in, it's like, it's funny. I had this wave of like banana slash pineapple, and then it changed more to now like a, a wood, like a fresh cut wood chip and uh, oranges and peaches. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe a little pine needle. Huh. It's subtle though. Nothing's nothing's really like one way any anything. It's a lot of little different nuances, whether it be fruit or sweetness or like an herb or an or a floral note. Kind of dances all over the place in a good yeah, way. For sure. Looks like it holds its legs fairly good. With the ABV, I'm not surprised. It's pretty slow, thick. Should be a decent mouth coat, I hope. <laughs> yeah, when is the last time you had this one? Um, I sipped on it. A bit, as you could tell, when I first got it, it's hard to, it's hard to say no. But I might add a taste or two, you know. Once I got about half, you know, a little bit around, a little bit before halfway, I kind of put the brakes on because I didn't want to run through it before we got to it. And um, so I guess it's been, a, you know, a few weeks. Oh, man. But but before that, it was, it was literally like 2018 because I was uh, – the only time I had it was at an expo where they had the uh, the dark. I tried that first and then went to the light after that and uh, had a sample and liked it enough to get my own on, on both. So Yeah. All right. I'm going to go in, man. Slancha. Happy Tasty Tuesday. Slancha. Uh, Tasty Tuesday, guys. Mm. Ooh. This is going to be something for you, I think. This is a very good, strong mouth coat taste. Mm. Wow. I'll be yeah. honest. This is this is one of the more interesting Highland Parks I've ever. I, it doesn't. It has a little bit of that. That the like sharpness of that smoky heather, mm. but boy, man, this is one of the most this this has to be the most bourbon forward Highland Park I've ever had. Oh yeah, and it's challenging. I I'll be honest, man. I'm just gonna say I can't say anything right now. I gotta do another sip. I I can't. I'm not sure what the hell to say right now. Hang on. That's cool. Take you, take you a little. If you have any uh, water, maybe have a little sip before. It's, mm. it'll have a. I think it'll have a good. Okay. Here. here we go. 
this is a really, really aggressive. Um, I get a lot of milk chocolate, dark chocolate, citrus, like a grapefruit, lemon, lime, citrus thing. Um, nougat, caramel. Nah, 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 nah. Um, mm. It's coatier than I thought it would be. It's got a kind of a nice buttery. Very. Um, buttery delivery. Local. It's got kind of a sour tartness to it, too. Big time. Yeah, it, the grapefruit thing. It's a grapefruit for me. And, like, that's what's like a ruby red grapefruit. Okay. I, I don't want to interject, but have you ever had any of the younger Springbank local barleys? Mm -hmm. Nine or the ten? Yeah. That raw kind of edgy aggressiveness, but it's still like a very condensed flavor. That's what it reminds me of, too. Yeah. I feel, I, I feel similarities here between this and the Springbank Nine local barley. I don't mean to, like, you know, go off on a tangent here, but. No, it, it makes sense. To me, this is like if they took the full volume, which was, I think, a 14 year, and they kept it even longer in that American oak to give it even more of a kind of a sour tart biteness to it. It's like the full volume, like on steroids, in, in a way, to me. Not as I guess the full volume is a bit sweeter, maybe, but this one's definitely on the tart sour this side. Is, this is, yeah, you know, I just for continuity's sake, I gotta get more sipper. Boy, what an interesting whiskey! If you would have told me, if you would have poured this for me blind. I would have said this is some type of like castring Craig Elegy. It does so have a go, yeah. Barley sweet forward and raw and edgy. Um, that mouth coat's oh, really good. Hmm? Yeah. Boy, that like white chocolate, like chocolate covered almonds. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm getting like a buttery almond finish with it. And it, it lasts pretty well. It seems like, but it's it's very. I wish it maybe be, be a little bit sweeter. It's not as sweet as I was hoping it would be, but you know, yeah. Um, it, it leans towards feeling like a savory slash sour slash sweet dram. Savory, sweet sour. I guess is the. The nose is very sweet, which is really it kind of fools you. It's a it's a whiskey that really kind of tricks you into thinking it's gonna be one way and it completely delivers a different way. Big time. Oh my. <laughs> Let us know in the chat if you have this before. Say again. What do you think? I was saying, like folks, let us know in the chat if you've had this before, what you think about yeah. it. I think Dustin's had it before, um, but I'm not sure if he likes it because he doesn't really like a lot of things. But oh, you're seeing them in the notes in the whiskey big time. He's wrong about full volume. Okay, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have the sweetness. I'm, I'm, I was going for like the 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 straightforward bourbon esque feeling of the whiskey it reminds me of the full volume in a way where if if it was like a, like american oaks a very like bitey intense character and I, I i was just thinking if how would they get this whiskey the only thing that comes close that i could think of how they would do it is if they took the full volume and they put it in and just let it sit longer because three years in a straightforward american oak you would think is pretty pretty harsh straightforward way to mature something right but i don't Have know you we did a review. Oh, I'm sorry. What did Andrew say? I didn't catch that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. He was saying, uh, I was just thinking about the full volume. I got it one for 88, and it is the eight, 17 year old's finished statement. So it's great for especially for that price. Is it also 17 years? I thought it was only 14. No, the it, full volume is like 17. Yeah. Oh, it is 17. Wow. Okay. Well, never mind. We'll have scratch you, that. <laughs> have you ever had the Balvany? And I feel like we did a show on this the Balvany 12 single barrel. Yes, you there's and you. Very, there's, this is reminding me of that too. There's something very elemental about this. 
it's very like mineral minerality there's this sourness this kind of i yeah it's like i en- i think i enjoy this a little bit more to be honest. like for me it's it's a little bit more uneven than i would have expected yeah i enjoyed the full volume more i think i think uh most would agree on that that it, the full volume it, it, it comes off as a more uh, a more enjoyable balanced whiskey yeah. if, if that's the way to say it um, a, this is such a weird whiskey there's like this laffy taffy <laughs> you ever had like a saltwater taffy like right away in the nose and or right away in the initial taste and then it like gets sour well this is what citric and acidic before you pass judgment i want you to put water on this yeah i'm gonna do that for sure uh where is my because i agree the first note that i got uh like like you was kind of a grapefruit note which i'm not really a big fan of but um i think once you tame this a little bit with a couple drops and i'm talking just a couple drops first yeah I always agree. go with less less first because you can always add more you can't take it out if you add too much keep he that in mind truth. he speaks truth so just one or two drops and then come back and tell me if it's changed at all if it's not then put a little bit more if it has let me know what you think on the notes this time hmm. Ooh. This definitely made it sweeter on the nose for me. Yeah, like a strawberry parfait. Excuse me, one second. The nose is still quite prickly, but it's it's not as sour. Uh, it's more just. It's hard to tell if it's alcohol or it's just like. Getting like a pine nut praline combination. Yeah, something like, you know, oh, interesting. Okay, praline, you said. I'm getting like a little bit of sweetness. I'm getting like a praline kind of a feel, but this on the on the more savory side of the nose, I'm getting like a, a pine nut. It's like a the pine nut wow. slash um, praline a lot combination. More, a lot more melon. On the and nose or on the are you talking about the palate the, or the nose? On the palate. On the palate. Oh, I haven't tasted it yet. Like, it's like a, it's chocolate and melon. I haven't tasted it yet. I was trying to get you to give me some notes on the nose first. Oh, go for That's it. That's okay. Still though, very hmm. see that takes the grapefruit away from me, thank God, and replaces it with more of a like an orange sherbet. With vanilla ice cream. Great pull there. That's a great note, Telex. Orange sherbet. Yeah. Fuck. Almost like uh have you ever had like a mango bubble tea? Oh yeah, there you go. Well mango. Yeah, it's, it's, it's edgy. There's this edgy like I can't tell if it's spice or alcohol. Like I think it's spice. That's just like cutting at the end of this that's Making me feel like it's interesting that it's 17 years old. Mm. It has like a, a bite at the end. Yeah, that's like um, it's got a. It's I'm trying to determine what kind of spice that is. It's very aggressive. It's, it's like almost like a like a cayenne pepper. Yeah, like a like a uh, habanero. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, crazy. it's not as dark as a black pepper. Like as far as oomph, it's not like a talisker, but it's more like a hot, cal- but like a really super hot caliente um, cilantro. Like like a if there was like hot cilantro or something. It's- <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what is that, man? Uh, yeah, it's like a, it's like a hot poblan- pop- poblano. But like super green, a super yeah. deep green pepper that's spicy. Habanero, mm-hmm. I guess, is the best way. Uh... Uh. Yeah, it's a it's a bit different. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'm ready to go final thoughts. Well, let me do one more sip. God, Whoa. this is confectionery. It's like powdered sugar, almost like a 
cotton candy thing on the nose. The nose is so different than the delivery here. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. Just for a test, I want to try to add a little bit more water than I usually do to it to see if it if it gets any you know different. Because it did it did mill without a bit. It was still very aggressive on the. Um... Oh, I already have water out here. One second. It was aggressive on the uh, delivery still, even after. Uh... A couple drops, like uh, Eric said, and uh, we gotta somehow find a way to team down that uh, oh, man. that it's hot pepper. Bizarre. It's almost like a hoppy Cascade beer, right? <laughs> as weird as it sounds. No, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's like a. Oops. I put a little bit more water in there than I usually would to see if if it makes it even more hot pepper green chili or that's what it reminds me of it's like that green chili salsa you can get at some of those peruvian places yeah 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 <laughs> yeah Ooh. okay oh man do you do you have any left at all or are you oh yeah oh yeah yeah I'm I, still if, if, I'm... if you're if you're not quite sure still add a little bit more water first before you have yeah, any more true. I want to see if this if this helps because I think it does help the more water you put in it, but but you got to be kind of great, you know, it's not too aggressive because you don't want to over dilute. But I think it'll tame it that some of those notes down Man, a bit. It smells like I'm telling you. I, I think I mentioned this earlier. The, the fresh local barley. Have you ever had a Glenmorangie? The Glenmorangie 15 Cadbury Estate. Or you know a nine or ten year old Springbank local barley, like these yeah. these very like cereal grain fresh barley forward. Like I get so much of that on my nose here. Yeah, it it even transcends the bourbon. There's even like watermelon in this, as weird as it sounds. And, and it, I think I enjoy this with a little bit more water than I usually would tapering it to about probably 48. I'm assuming I'm not sure how much water it takes to do yeah, that. I did about three more drops and like, honestly it has brought it to basically just a very sweet whiskey with, oh. a, with you know, some spice in the background. Yeah. Still not, 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 not your cup of tea. I, 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 was I don't trying know. To... I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm very, this is a journey. This whiskey is a journey. I, again, I, it really reminds me of like a Craigalicky 17 or a Craigalicky 13 with that raw, like elemental, I mean, even an Anok, like an, a young Anok. It's the, yes, that minerality probably is what's doing it. I have a feeling it, it does have this kind of like underlying, Thing that's yeah, it's interesting. I mean, maybe it's like the heather from the peat or something. You know, no. yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll I can probably go final thoughts here. So, full disclosure, I, I don't think I've ever had a Highland Park this unique. And so, check like there's a box to check there. This is a very unique Highland Park. Um. My personal taste does not align with what I, the dominant notes I get out of this, which is a lot of kind of like kind of concrete, kind of grapefruit sours. It's a little bit too much for me on that, but I don't think it's a bad whiskey in and of itself. It's just a very busy whiskey, something that I didn't quite expect it to be as loud as it is for 17 years old. And I wonder if that has something to do with the the ABV. I, I, I wonder if the ABV on this at 46% mellowed down a little bit, would have a little bit more finesse. And I'm not, I say that neutrally, not that finesse is good or bad, just that like, I wonder if this would have a bit more finesse with a little less ABV. That said, uh, it is an ever changing whiskey. It's kind of interesting. Um, what did you say the price point was on this? Well, the the release price was three hundred, but now you're seeing it for two twenty five to two fifty usually. 
This is a re. I mean, this is this is a very singular whiskey. I. I I would say that like, you know, Highland Park fans, like this would be a whiskey that's gonna be very challenging. It's, it doesn't taste, it, there's a little bit of that Hallmark Highland Park in it, but it, it's really different. Um, and I kind of appreciate the fact that they, you know, pushed it a little bit and, and tried something that seems to be just kind of uncharacteristic of their house style. Um, all in all, I'm not putting my personal taste aside. Like this isn't a whiskey I would buy, mostly because it doesn't fit my flavor profile. But judging the quality and the what they've been working on here, like you know, I think it's a fair three point two five. Um, like I think this is like it's above average in its craft and style. Um, I just think it's it's kind of busy and it's kind of it doesn't quite land in a way like this is a whiskey that demands a lot of attention and I'm not saying that that's always a bad thing but I'm saying in the case of something like this it, it it's it's not like the the quiet parts are loud you know what I'm saying like like um, and, and and for that reason I I just think like especially if you're a Highland Park fan, I don't know if this is necessarily something that lands unless you're looking for something different. Um, yeah, I'll sit comfortably at 3.25 on this. Yeah, I uh, I, I felt similar to, to what you're saying with, with the experience. So it's funny because when I first heard about it, I thought it was going to be like an older... I thought, and, and I think some people were confused by what I was saying about the comparison with the full volume. I, I'm not seeing that this tastes like the full volume per se it, as is. It's like if you took it and force fed it into an American oak. I think that's where, what gets this such a crazy vibe is this American oak after 17 years. Is, that, that's, that to me is like almost overkill it, and I think, I think that's why it's so sour bitter slash bitey it, it yeah. to me it's like yeah it there's very little refinement going on here even with the age um if if i was blind and was given it i would think it was probably only like a 12 to 14 year tops whiskey i, I would definitely would not get 17 years out of it um definitely do, not. i mean definitely not I, yeah i'm just gonna if if you are a sweet have a sweet tooth like I do, this is not the whiskey for you. Get the full volume at f seventeen years at a very much easier to deal with price. Um, this one is good for those people though that like to spend a lot of time finding the sweet spot in a whiskey. It can be found for me. It's it's with added water but you have to be careful no don't over dilute it at the same time if you're you know just wanting a good casting strength whiskey where you can pop it open and sip it and not spend a lot of time with it this is not for you either um yeah i do think it's it's got a lot of issues uh like that but on the other hand i do love the abv 52.9 percent is a great abv i do f love the fact that they do you know put a age you know, they, they tried with the 17 year statement. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into the marketing and stuff. The craft, you know, is it colored? I, I don't even know, honestly, if it is. I would hope that they wouldn't bother since they're calling it the light to, to, you know, put any coloring in this other than maybe a consistency thing. But, um, you know, and chill filtration. God help them if they do that with this. I don't think this would be chill filtered, but as we've been uh, learning uh, recently, some people really hate the chill filtering thing. So maybe, <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they did and didn't tell us. But, uh, you know, with all that said, I, I'm, I think I'm right there with you. I think it's, it's above average, but not by far. It's... Uh, it's kind of a shame because once you have the dark, I think you're going to be completely 
perplexed of why did they bother with the light at all but that's a whole nother statement <laughs> but um i did like this enough to pick up my own bottle because i don't mind taking in a little extra time and, and playing with the water and and you know doing all that and i know some people are thinking to themselves why would you want to spend more than 200 dollars in a whiskey that takes that long to get it the way you want well i mean to me half the fun is is messing with stuff like that so to me yeah. it's not a big deal i don't have to have it you know ready ready at, at my beckoning call every time i'm ready so with this one I'm, I'm right. I think I'm 3.25 is, is a fair statement score on this one. It's, yeah. Uh, um, you know, it's, I, I, as you've been talking and I've, I've finished up this, like, I'm so in between a three, three, two, five. Like I, I feel like my three, two, five is a hat tip to people who might find more in this than I can. But if I went with my own judgment, I'd go three, five. Um, so just a caveat, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, like I'm almost deferring to people being like, oh yeah, you know, this is, there's, there's certain things in here that I find so not my style that I'm trying not to let it affect my score. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but at the same time, it's like, it does because I'm trying to separate flavor from quality. Um, exactly. I mean, there is this like weird. This. I mean, I, I, this is not a whiskey that I necessarily would want to sip on very much, but I recognize that there's enough going on in here that some folks might might find a lot of joy in it. Right. They wouldn't want to slight it. So that's why, I, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in that three. three it's five. a. It's tough. It's a very sour whiskey. So if you are the type that love like Sour Patch Kids, Smarties, if you like that kind of flavor, this has a very much a Smarties kind of a, and leaning more towards the sour end than sweet, it's got that kind of Smarties flavor going on to it. Yeah, totally. So it's 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 a it's a, it's a rough it's a rough one if you're thinking you're, you're going to get like you know a sweeter bourbon cask whiskey which to me is the full volume and that's the one if i'm going to get a holland park that reminds me of a local barley that has the age but yet has the in the strength and the bite but yet also has the finesse the full volume i think is a better whiskey mm. hey steven up, good to see you man a little bit more water so uh i will return in just a second then we will uh, get into the dark sounds good man the uh, good to see you there, Stephen. Hopefully uh, you're having fun. We're taking a look. We just ended up with uh, doing over the light. Uh, I think Stephen, you've had this. Did you have a similar kind of surprise where you the light wasn't as good as you were hoping? Um, I know for me it was after I had the dark. I liked the dark a lot, so I went and, and tried to find a light, and I, I still like it enough to 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 deal with it but it's definitely not you know um what i would consider a winner if i'm going to get a highland park like i said bourbon cast i'm going to go for the full volume i think it uh rather than that one so i must have read one or two bad reviews of the light in the past because it never has been on my radar on the other hand i've heard good things about the dark and it is on my should try list yeah i think that's a i think that's definitely going to be uh the deal in the long run. We'll see what, what uh, Eric thinks when he comes back. I'll be surprised if he doesn't like the dark, to be honest with you. Um, it was of 2017. It was one of the better whiskeys of that year. It was, it was kind of the, the killer for me. I mean, even going up with uh, some other ones that were pretty hardcore and, and even more expensive. I thought the, the dark was, was up there, but we'll see how it goes here. Hey, two wheels down. Good to see you, man. <laughs> what you sipping? I'm, I'm just curious. I enjoyed the light, had it in the blind. Not worth the price, but I enjoyed it. I thought you had it in the same blind, but I could be wrong. I had it with you guys at one point, but I already actually had it before. I might have... Uh, I think that might have been one of the ones from... Um, uh, Kenny, I want to say, I the first time I had it was when uh, an expo in two thousand seven and eighteen when it was released, 
it was right after the dark and light were released and then kenny had the the tasting after that that was my second time having it in that blind and then i went ahead and got my own bottle because uh yeah, I know it's. I had a feeling it was you, Swami. <laughs> um, but it was like, uh, it was you know decent enough to to pick up a bottle. But yeah, it's not not something that I gravitate towards. If I'm gonna have something like that, I'd rather have that Balvenie single barrel, twelve year or the uh, full volume from Holland Park. I think's a better whiskey. Did you like the uh, the full volume, Stephen? And did you like it better than the light, or do you remember? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> no, I remember you. I remember, Swami, that you had this uh, account, but you, you're all over the place. I can't keep track of all the stuff that you do, man. <laughs> and you don't come by all the time. It's probably been at least a month or two since I've seen you. So hope you're doing well there in Montreal. Not Montreal. No, you're in Montreal, I think, aren't you? I'm pretty sure you are. <laughs> I know you're in Quebec, at least. Yep, Ben uh, is. Uh, what are you? What are you sipping, Ben? Out of curiosity, has anybody else had this one? Liked it, hated it, thought it was okay, just out of curiosity. There we go. <laughs> mm. So we're going Highland Park Dark next. Hmm. So we're going the dark next, huh? This yes. Is the, the Yang to the Ying. I think you're going to think it's so different that you're probably going to think, wow, why did they even combine these two in a statement? But we'll see how it goes first. I don't want to. I think I have a good idea why they did it. Money. It's, it's so like aggressive in that grapefruit flavor, man. It's insane. Mm. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. It's the sourness, I think, is what gets in the way of um, – that's my biggest beef, I think, with the light is the sourness is not well balanced with all the other flavors. If it had more sweetness or more of that minerality or more of like a those floral notes to balance off the sourness, then I'd probably be more into it. It just doesn't have the balance for me. Yeah. <laughs> Swami just spell checked his his diss, which is like the funniest thing ever. What's up, Swami? Oh, Lordy. <laughs> I mean, like, dude, you should have just let it stand because, like, the minute you, like, spell checked it, it took away any, like, half punch that it had. I mean, it wasn't even that good. But <laughs> <laughs> What up, buddy? Oh, my Lord. How you been, man? What did you uh, think since you came, uh, Swami? Uh, have you ever tried the uh, Dark of the Light before? What was your takes on it? I think you've had both. Um, or at least uh, maybe one or the other. Just out of curiosity, what your feelings were on it. He's he's meticulously typing right now, so he doesn't he doesn't have any... Hand, is he a, a hand pecker? <laughs> yeah, yeah he's, he's chicken picking right now. Tony, <laughs> that's what your mom said. Oh, 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 oh. I see what he did there. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> anyway, Thanks for effort, Lord, man. Yeah, anyways, so folks should check out. I mean, if you're into um, crotch and crotch related things, uh, uh, two, two Wheels Down is a channel where they he rides his motorcycle around. Um, it's good stuff. Oh He's been transitioned from his malted in Montreal video to that. And so I highly recommend folks check it out, especially if you want to learn something about motorcycles, because the dude knows a lot more than you do. So uh, give that man a sub. Curious on seeing how the dark the dark is. Is it darker than the Bow 15 darkest? Or is it light and color dark flavor? Well, it's actually a little bit of, of, of both. Uh, it's pretty comparable, I would say, as far as the color with the, the, uh, the, the, the Bowmore 15 darkest. But the Bowmore 15 darkest is not actual color it's it's they actually put coloring in it i'm pretty sure so oh most most definitely 
keep that in mind when you're trying to get this this in no way should be ever compared to the Boomer 15 Tarkas. <laughs> that's like no. that's like saying uh, one, one smell on this, one smell on this is like the most obvious reason why it should never be compared to the Boomer Tarkas. <laughs> and and even to think that is sacrilegious. So it's almost like me saying, okay, let's compare the um the Cardu 12 with the freaking, you know, uh, Dallas do. I mean, it's just, it's, you're just not going to do it, man. Yeah. yeah. Not even, it's not even in the same freaking ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> the color is natural. Yes. On, uh, on the, uh, on the dark on this one that's that's and if you if you look at it in the glass it actually is a pretty good, decent color it's not you know for 17 years it's what i would expect it to look like it's not you know not as dark as the dalmor 15 high 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 ha 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 but it's you know <laughs> it's a reasonable color can you put in a whiskey yeah no i have it so i have not the whole had out of e 150 a in there <laughs> yeah i have a I do have a bottle of a Bowmore 15. It's from um, that boutique whiskey company, which is like that indie bottler that only does those half bottles and overcharges for them. Uh, <laughs> it's like uh, 49 point something. And it's amazing. It's, it looks like an art bike 10. Yeah. Compared to like what you look at the, and, but it's still Bowmore 15. And then you compare it to the Bowmore 15 that they put out, and where it's like it literally looks like a caramel syrup, you know? Yeah, uh, it's it's insane. I, that that's and then another thing about that bottle, it's so sulfuric too. Unless you're in the mood for a bit of sulfur, you better stay away. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember the last time I even had it. I it's honestly, I just don't buy much Bowmore. Um, not because like I, I you know, it's. When you have an experience with a whiskey and you don't like it, uh, you you tend not to go back to the distillery for quite some time. I I had that same experience with Aberlour. I didn't touch an Aberlour for years. It, it just like it it wasn't in my mind, you know. Yeah. Uh, after I had the Aberlour sixteen, which was literally like a uh, uh, drinking a watered down rosé with Swami's mom after you know. Banging her three or four times in one morning, and it was like, oh my god! Like you're really gonna pour me this weak ass shit now? Like you know I need something strong to get over this, and it was it was just like awful, and and that was the end of it. And, and wow. so I never went to it again. And uh, it's a it's a horrible whiskey. It's forty percent. It's it's a hundred dollars. I mean, you want to talk about somebody who overcharges for what they deliver? <laughs> I, Aberlour, right? I yeah. Mean, uh, unless you're going with the app. Very much, very much the same experience there. And I was like that with the Dalmore until I found that really, really, really like almost like half price on the 18. I, I would have not picked it up under any circumstances if it wasn't half price because there is absolutely no way to ever spend over $200 for that whiskey. Yeah. At 43%. And with the coloring and chill filtering, it's just not. But, I mean, the only reason I, I went ahead and pulled the trigger, it is a damn good tasting whiskey. I'll give them credit on those matchables and those uh, specific casts that they use on that. Those are pretty nice. But, I mean, 40 and 43%, guys, is, is not going to cut it usually when it comes to whiskey anymore, it seems like. Unless you've got really damn good casts now. You yeah. can, some some can get away with it if they have the damn good casks, but it's very rare to see that happen. It seems like. All right, so let's check out this. So what's what's the tail of the tape here on the darkest? The um, well, the darkest is a whole different tail. <laughs> <laughs> this one is the uh, the dark. I'm not talking about the hole of depression that Swami lives in. I'm talking uh -oh. about the whiskey that we're drinking right now. The dark uh, itself, yep, yeah, seventeen years again, and uh, this is the one that came out actually uh, before. Uh, this was twenty eighteen on the light. This was December of twenty seventeen, and um, this one is at fifty two point nine, which is uh, the same exact ABV. So fifty two point nine on both. 
This one, though, instead of the American oak, this one's a European oak sherry butt. So that's wow. a huge difference on this one. 28,000 release on uh, wild worldwide again on this one. Same price difference. I see it 300 down slash down to 225 to 250 ish. Um, and, uh, this one is, um, I think going to be, uh, more in your wheelhouse if I had to take a guess, but you will be, Hopefully, yeah, the, I feel like this might be more in most people's wheelhouse. I mean, <laughs> just by virtue of like how rich and sherry influenced this is, it's delicious on the nose. It really is. Um, oh. Wow, what a contrast! It's interesting. You said that they're the same ABV for both. Yeah, fifty-two point nine, but you don't really detect it on the nose on this one, do you? As much as not the other one. one. No, the other one, I felt like it was really pressing this one not so much i think you're gonna find i'm guessing that you'll find this one you'll feel the refinement in the 17 years a lot more on this whiskey than you did the other one is my guess but we'll see this sound this smells much more like a highland park to me i mean this is where you're getting a lot more of those orange tangerine like heavy fruit notes you're getting a wisp of that smoke in the background like this is much more in the highland park wheelhouse that warmth that you get from it that is very distinct. Um, and I'm not saying that the light didn't work because it wasn't a Highland Park uh, a profile. It didn't work. It didn't quite work for other reasons. <laughs> this, however, uh, much different. It's, it's like a stew warm, fruit. It's inviting. It's inviting. I mean, apricot, orange, pineapple chocolate yeah getting a lot more stewed fruits in this one definitely yeah for real it's becoming kind of jammy and, and like you said the the chocolate's in there too <laughs> yeah man it's like that uh it's like that uh berry medley stuff that you get at like shitty diners in the United States. You know what I'm talking about? Where it's like grape, cranberry, and raspberry all in one. It's like it's like that, but not in a bad thing. You know, it's it's definitely favoring the Concord grape thing for me on, on the wow. Yeah, you're right though. I also get the mixed berries on the side with the blackberry and the raspberry and the Any spicy you get in there at all? Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, it's kind of like what you expected. It's cinnamon. A little nutmeg in there. Yeah, nutmeg, or, you know. Yeah. And then this is this just smells delicious. This is what it would be like if Swami's mom took a shower once a month. Like this <laughs> is like that good. It would be like, wow, how refreshing. <laughs> God man. It's quite delicious. I mean, I leave her so sweaty that, like, she's got to wash that stuff up eventually. Bone. With a nice honey glaze. <laughs> Swami. What's up, brother, man? <laughs> hey. uh, yeah, we're, we're, just, we're just jerking it off. How you doing, brother? By the way, if anybody loves uh, motorcycles, do, do hit up... Uh, Two wheels down. If you're ever looking to never get laid again in your life, that's the channel. Good. This is delicious, though, man. I gotta say, get, get some like a, there's like a raspberry thing going on in this. You ever had a raspberry beer? Like a, uh, I'm not a big fan of those like fruit infused beers. You know what I'm no, I know what you mean. Yeah, this is this to me has got that, but it's also got like I'm getting a, a, a more of the like the woody notes are coming in now. Yeah, like a cedar, a cedar meets like a sandalwood mix kind of. A... <laughs> he said that the the basement I'm in is real. Yeah, no, no shit, man. Uh, next week it'll hopefully be better. I uh, my stuff hasn't shown up yet, so I'm I'm literally like in a cavernous 
Apart yeah, he, he doesn't have anything delivered yet, guys. Give him a break. He just freaking no, no, got there funny. yesterday. It is funny. I, I mean, look how red I am. I look like I'm in like a George, uh, a fucking uh, David Lynch movie right now. Like I'm some like <laughs> Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should be sitting on a velvet couch with a strobe light behind me, you know. Oh no! Wait, that would be Swami and I's mom on a Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> refreshed. Uh, it should. Anyways, anyways, let's get to the whiskey. I'm gonna go in for the taste. Yeah, let's have a taste, man. It's <laughs> lunch, guys. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Now we're talking. <laughs> So you're saying this is the same price as the light? Yes. Like retail right now, if somebody in the channel wanted to go get a bottle of this, this would be the same price, right around that two hundred. Well, it's two twenty-five to two twenty-five to two fifty. If if you do your homework, you can find it for that. Still, mm. I, that's a damn good taste for me. I think I like that one. Much, much, much better balanced to me than the light. What do you think, man? Definitely better balanced. There's a really nice um, – you ever had a Heath bar? Mm, mm -hmm. Where it's like the toffee. Intense toffee, 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 yeah. Candy. I love it. The Heath bars are my favorite candy bars. Maybe that's why I love this so much. <laughs> right there, man. Yeah, it was three hundred, but I'm just saying you could find this easy for two fifty, two twenty five if you play your cards right right now. Yeah, mm. sure. no. Totally. And the great thing about these is you don't have to buy these as a set. You can buy just the light, or you can buy just the dark, and and you know complete them you know separately if you want, or just get one and never touch the other one. It's up to you. This is a great like raspberry thing going on. This this is, I mean, honestly, this is just. It's more palatable. It's more pleasant. I mean, it's it's a hell of a lot more refined. It's I taste the age, I taste the balance, I taste the the great grape factor. It's jammy as hell. Yeah, with some chocolate, a little bit of black pepper, but not enough to like overdo anything. Is this enough spice to give it a little pizzazz? Yeah, definitely. Love the mouth coat. It's very thick, oily. It's not waxy, but it's got a nice oily kind of a build to it. It's very easy to drink this at 52.9 compared to the light. The light, you felt the bite because of the American oak. With this, yeah, it's so much more well-rounded. You can actually it almost yeah. scarily sip this too fast. Almost. It's just... It so much of this is being predicated on the fact that I know it's a Highland Park. You know what I'm saying? Like when you told me earlier, when we were talking about the light, the light to me, it was like, Christ, if you would have poured that to me blind, I would have thought it was some type of Castor and Craig Elke. This, I think I would have gotten closer to it being a Highland Park because it has the orange quality. It has that heather, honey. Heathery peat, yeah. Like those classic the kind of notes you expect from Highland Park. And I, and I don't want to say that this is conventional. Like, I think that this, this tastes much more viscous and worthy of a 17-year-old age state. Whereas What's the other, like, I felt the light, it was like, I wouldn't have guessed that it was that old. This, I feel like you can tell. There's some good age casting. And, and since even these are both peated slightly, to me this one has a much better smoky presence to it. It's got it does have a peat, but it has a very much higher smoke level mm -hmm. on this dark than it does uh, the 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 light. Even though it might have had a little peat in there, I didn't get any smoke really at all. It was more of like a light peaty whiskey. This is a, definitely a dark smoky whiskey, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. God, man, that malted milk ball thing, too. I just put a little bit of water on it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I'm trying to be objective. 
like I just I enjoy this so much more. I hear you. It's 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 not just you, man. It's yeah. It's not just you. I, I enjoyed this one a hell of a lot more than the first one by far. What'd you guys think of the dark when you had it versus you know? Did did it meet your these expectations? Are both, these are both seventeen year olds, huh? And they're both seventeen. Yeah, both both same ABV. Both both a lot of the similarities. The really only difference. Ironically, is that American oak versus the European cherry butt deal, um, which it's just amazing what one does versus the other. <laughs> yeah. What do you uh, got sipping uh, also on the side? Hopefully, you got a Highland Park with you. If not, what are you what are you sipping? And uh, what do you guys think of the dark if, when you tried it versus uh, other ones? If you haven't tried it, let us know if you're thinking about picking it up. Yeah, and you know, Telex, that brings up a good question. So when we think about the Highland Park range, you know, you've got your 12-year-old Viking Honor, and then you got the 18-year-old Viking Pride about 135 bucks. This one, 17-year-old, and but it's what, 55.8? Is that what you said? This one, no, these are both 50 uh 52.9. And this one over 52.9 is already about 200 bucks. I mean how how do you stack this up against an eighteen? If you were if you were recommending, would you recommend? Let me let me put it this way. Would you recommend somebody throw down the extra sixty five seventy bucks to go for this higher ABV seventeen year old over a Highland Park eighteen? It's tricky. The the Highland Park eighteen to those that don't know is deemed as one of the best whiskeys. Period of of out of many 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 eighteen year olds, and it's still ironically at a pretty reasonable price for around one thirty. It's really hard to find yeah. a distillery that's got the name recognition that Highland Park does, and where you can still find getting their eighteen year at you know one thirty. If if you don't believe me, look at my Callan. We're looking at 320 usually on that. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Dalmore even, which is not even remotely as greatly craft, crafted as the Highland Park 18, that one goes for 220. It's it's just it's just insane. So, but to answer your question, if you're gonna put the light up against it, I would much rather you get an 18 year way before you would even touch the light or think about it. The light is, I think, only good for those that really like to spend a lot of time. You know, fucking around with their whiskey to get it to where they want, and they want it to be complex, but they want it to be difficult. That's what this whiskey is. But the dark, I think, is definitely worthy of the extra difference. And if you can, you know, get an eighteen um, and the seventeen dark, definitely do it. If you can only get one out of the two, I would start with the eighteen first, and then go for the the, the dark second. But yeah. if you can only get one and, and it's a limited edition, you're not going to be disappointed by this Dark 17. So maybe pick that one up first, actually, because you can't get it anymore. The 18 will always be there for at least another couple of years. So, Yeah, no, that's a good point, Alex. And I'll be honest, something that's come to mind to me while I've been sipping this, have you had the Highland Park 16, fuck, what is it called? Twisted uh, tattoo, twisted tattoo with the with the Riara, Riara cast finish. Yeah, to me that was a very beautiful vanilla bomb. It, it was a very big vanilla bomb. I, this I, one, I, I like remember, that. like I, man, I would love to try these two head to head. Because yeah, I to me the twisted funny. tattoo should have been the light. If they released the twisted tattoo as the light, <laughs> that would have been the best combination with those two together. Because you had the vanilla light and you had the the dark and they both had some really nice fruit going on in both of them you know yeah uh oh yeah, i am um, i'm really impressed with this dark i mean this is this is what i would expect when i buy a 17 year old highland park you know like and again i'm i'm, I'm seeing my bias here in that you know if you've had a couple highland parks in your life you kind of have a sense of what you're like yep yeah, what is it what does andrew page got to say here I like full volume about as much as I like the 18, although it's been about two years since I've had the 18. I'll probably buy the dark someday, too. I, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, 
buy it at all. If you like the 18 and you like the full volume, I think you'll like the dark about as equally, if not even maybe even more, uh, depending on uh, what kind of notes you like to pull out. It's kind of a, you know, it's a tough one, but this one to me is definitely, it's not too sweet. It's not too savory. It's not too really anything. It's well, well balanced. And I think that's what makes the dark a much easier to deal with whiskey. Yeah, I agree with you. Tasting better tonight than I did last. Sorry. Okay, cool. Wow, he's having some good stuff. Have you ever had the uh, dark there, uh, Steve, uh, Stephen? I think you might have. I know he had the light. I think he had the dark too in that same tasting. But I can't remember if you uh, enjoyed it very much. I, I I definitely like this one a lot better than that first one, though. Well, you ready for your final thoughts on the old dark there, Skippy? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, much like I said with the light, I'm going to really try and separate my personal feelings from what I think is the integrity of the whiskey. Uh, I was hovering in the 3, 3.25 range. I think I landed at 3.25. I, in hindsight, probably was a straight 3 on the light. This one, however, I think showcases both Highland Park's strengths and doesn't lose any of its complexity. It's rich, it's very, it's got the smoke, it's got the depth. I like this more than I like the Highland Park 18. Uh, obviously the price is what it is. This is delicious. Um, this is better than the Highland Park cast strength, and I wanna mention that only because it sets a boundary because this is near cast rank. And I will tell you the Highland Park cast rank that they put out at least batch one, uh, underwhelming as far as I was concerned. Um, I think this steps above the 18 in boldness. It brings more of the, that, like what you lose in a little salty, it brings more in boldness and I think it more than offsets. I, I really like this at a, at a 225 mark price range. Uh, I think this is close to a must buy. I'm a 375 on this. Very cool, man. I'm I'm right there with you. I, I uh, I'm gonna give it a higher mark though because I I just uh, out of all the Highland Parks, and I've I've tried many many of them. I've tried a lot of the NASs, a lot of the uh, age stated stuff, everything from the 25 down to the 10, uh, back when I used to have a 10. Um, it's it's one of my all-time favorite Highland Parks. Th this is why I even considered buying the light was because I enjoy the dark so much. Um, when I had the light, I was kind of like, wow, this is this is the same this is the same like ballpark. I, I, I was just like, okay. And, and since I, the only reason I, I still got a bottle of it is that I still didn't mind playing around with, with getting it right. But this one, I love it. Cause I don't have to mess with it at all. It doesn't really need anything other than being neat and love the sherry cask in it. Yeah. Love the age statement. I guess I'll have to ding it for the craft as far as the coloring, chill filtering, if there's anything going on with it. I don't I don't know if, on this one if there's any like you know, flat whether it's not or if it is because they don't put it on their labels like some other things do. And if you don't have it on the label, we always say usually you have to be skeptical um, by a lot of it unfortunately. But with that said, it's all about what it tastes like. I think it's really damn good. I'm going to give this one a 4.25. I think it's pretty damn solid. Yeah, Telex, you know what, man? You called me on my bullshit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to roll with you on that. You're I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to do it that way. <laughs> no, no. That's, this is part of it. This is part of, the, this is part of the process. You're fucking right. I'm a four on this. This is... I, I will say this is worth buying. You're you're right. No, you're right, man. Like there, this is 
This ain't no 375. This is a fucking four, man. This this hits. This hits all the boxes. You're totally right. The way that you laid that out, I'm convinced I am uh retracting the jury. We're gonna we're gonna bring it back in. I'm I'm moving up, I'm going for it. Four two five Telex four from Malt. And then we had three point two fives across the board on the light. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's kind of sad that it, I had to give it that low of a deal for such a, a, a tough to get slash expensive whiskey. But we're just keeping it real when it comes to what you know. You guys should put your money toward. I would much rather you save it for the dark and a scorch than you know putting it on the light. That's that's the way I look at it, really. <laughs> no, man, you're not lying. You're right. I was being too timid on that, and the way you laid it out. Yeah, I, I'm I'm I, I'm not above humility, so I will uh, I will. What is it? What do they call? You know, you eat crow. I will eat my uh, bullshit. Yeah, I'm going up. I'm going up to four. I, I tell you what, I wish that Highland Park had a way to make this. If they, if they had a way to make this bottle easily accessible at a regularly around a two hundred dollar price range, I would actually be a repeat customer, and that's that's what makes me know I really like a yeah, whiskey. Repeat, repeat customer in Highland Park is usually like a, a that's usually a sentence that doesn't always go together because it's like there are a there are so many goddamn options, and b you never know how much it's going to change from year to year. You exactly. Know, there's a lot of folks who are adamant about now. I, I did do a taste test of the old Highland Park versus the Highland Park Viking Honor. I didn't notice too much variation, but I know that there are people that are adamant about it. There are definitely people adamant about the 25. There are definitely people adamant about the 18. And I believe them. I've just not had the opportunity. Oh, and he's got, yeah. You know, like, I. Uh, so I gotta respect that. I'm not gonna pretend that I know. This is the uh, same kind of side. It's the same. I showed the uh, light box. I didn't really show them the the dark one, but it's really it's the same quote on the side, and uh, the same kind of look. Except that the the wood is is colored, you know, black, pretty much all over. Same type of uh, opening. But yeah, I mean, it's it's if. If they, uh, this is one of my favorite all-time Highland Park bottles. I have to say that's another reason why I kind of gave it a, a more of a boost. Yeah, right, man, you know, I was I was being a little too critical, and, and I'm I was I was on the cusp. I mean, in my head, I'm like, eh, is it four? Is it three? You're right. I, I'm I'm look. I'm not above being wrong and and adjusting my. I know this must sound very refreshing to most people. You know, most people uh, they, I'm the they, same way. <laughs> they take their opinion and they'll go to the death of it. I I am willing to uh, adapt as facts become known. And Telex, you were compelling and you were talking about things that I was already thinking. Yes, yeah, I'm a four. I'm a four out of five. And you've talked me into a couple of scores where I was thinking one way. And even if I was felt strongly about it, but once you mentioned a couple things, I didn't really necessarily maybe. Even if I thought about it, maybe it just kind of reinforced. You the, work on that, uh, that McKellen eighteen though. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man! I mean, we, you know we have to have disagreements, and, that, and that's good. But uh, no, no, I mean that's you're right. Like it's a culture, you know. We, you know, and I think you know. By the way, folks, you know, hit the thumbs up if you enjoy that. I mean, we have a culture of like. Look, I mean, Telex and I are going to, like, push each other a little bit on things from time to time. Be like, really, bro? Really? And that's what makes us fun. So if you enjoy this, do hit the thumbs up. Give him a sub. Uh, you can toss me a sub, too, at Moments or Whiskey Reviews if you're into such things. Don't Tell forget that. Coming up next week, by the way. Don't forget the happy hour if you guys are early enough at 8 o'clock yeah. Eastern. Seven Central, uh, Mal does his uh, happy hour show before this show. So every Tuesday, stay tuned to that. You were talking about the next show coming up. We uh, we talked about tonight doing a Deanston, and I know we had we had to push it next and, week. So we're going to do the Deanston next week. I take it. Yeah, that sounds good. Let me uh, see if I can bring up my inventory thing here. Here we go. Yeah, we got the Deanston show. Uh, Next week, and then after that, we got the Compass Box show. 
That sounds fantastic. So next week we're doing Deanston 12, Deanston 17 PX. Yes, indeed. And it's a PX cask, it looks like. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I can't wait, man. I, I, it's rare that I get my hands on a PX cask for Deanston. Anytime I've ever gotten one, I've been happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's going to be awesome. One second. Let me get this out of the way. Do your thing. Yeah, I've got the. Uh, and then we've got the uh, Glenrothes. We'll take a look at an Akintoshin, a Linkwood, Spayburn, Old Pulteney. We got. Yeah, we, got uh, of, we got a bunch of good stuff. I mean, we're well in our way into year two here, brother. And then we got to get with Stephen Connor and do that Emirate uh, Thomas show at some point with the Paul John Christmas edition. That'll be fun. We'll do, we'll do Christmas in July. That'll be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, it was so funny today, Telex. You know, I'm cleaning up my trunk of my car. You know what I pulled out was the, the box of the Atama that you have. I got to sit behind me. Nice, nice. Like, oh, yes, precious, precious Portwood Atama. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad that made it at least. I think you'll be happy with that. I, I can't wait to dig into that with Stephen because uh, I already went through like a little half of it. And uh, let's just say I think we'll have a little fun. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. That's going to be a really, really fun one. Um, yeah, brother. And then next week we're gonna yeah next week we got Deanson and again Deanson is one of these distilleries that I think you know for some of us in the north you know in northern America you can't always get the great Deanstons yeah and so I think that it's gonna be like I think our show is gonna be two things one is to profile how good Deanston is and by the way it is good. And two is to like, yo, like these are things, some of these are worth going overseas for. And oh, yeah. And your hands on because this distillery is making incredibly good craft stuff, 46% non chill natural color and great finishes. They're like Glen, Glen Murray, you know, Glen Murray and Tamat. They have, a, you know, they'll finish their whiskey in anything. But it's always like not integrity, as as Ralphie would say. Deanson does it with integrity, and great distillery men. And I'm really looking forward to profiling those next week. That's going to be a lot of fun. I hear you there. I hate to say this, but I think streaming art might, might be having some issues tonight. I've I've heard some people say that they've had some video issues. I haven't seen any come from the feed. Your, your feed has been great. Mine's been solid. So I'm not sure what the uh, deal is. I apologize to everybody tonight if they were watching live and having uh, us come in and, and cut out. But uh, we haven't noticed any issues, guys. So uh, I'll have to. Uh, I mean, well, it's been a little bit. I've noticed a little choppiness, but it hasn't been too bad. No, not, nothing, nothing out of the, or, the ordinary that we, you know, would see uh, on occasion. So I bet you that, uh, yeah, Ben says it's been totally fine the whole time. So I'm thinking there might be some internet issues going on tonight for some people because, like, I've heard some people say that they haven't had any issues, and some people, like Andrew Pace, said that they were some video issues. So I think that there, we're seeing some uh, unfortunate COVID overload. Fucking lessons, man interweb machines you know uh, <laughs> over over time have been a, an issue so yeah if the people are coming back in it looks like because i was like thinking something's going on because i saw like half the people shut out of the room yeah uh, i just got an instagram message from daniel um he just said the same thing what does Quad Cities mean? Four different cities? Yeah, Quad Cities is four, um, but as far as which ones, I'm not sure where you're getting that from. Is that like on a, a probably some sort of tech support site or something? There's, there's, I, I, there was an issue recently where uh, Verizon cut fiber, or somebody, I don't want to say Verizon, somebody cut fiber up north. Uh, this was a few months ago, and, and they brought down the entire eastern seaboard when it came to internet connections so there might have been some uh, issues it looks like steven says it's working now so 
outside of the East Coast, I think something must have happened with. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at Twitter right now. The old versus the new label, Bunahaven 18s. Mike and Dustin did a review last year in which they said the older version was much better. I was lucky enough to have that box version of the Bunahaven 18 was my last one I had. I know that they have canisters now for the uh, Bunahaven 18, but I haven't tried a new one. Have you tried the uh, Bunahaven 18, uh, Eric, out of the new? Yeah, uh, I, have. I loved it. I loved it. I have not had the old one, though, so I can't really do a fair comparison. I mean, I enjoyed the the the, the box version. I, I would be surprised if it was that big of a difference. So I'll have to pick up and see if I can find one. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, I've been I have my eye on a Bunnell having twenty five at some point. I even saw a really good price on a thirty, believe it or not, not too long ago. I'm not sure if they'll still yeah, have it, but I have a twenty five, but it's a newer one. So we would have to do the newer one. But yeah, no, my God, I would be totally game for that. Yeah, any 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 high end uh, Bunov we can get our hands when we're happy about. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to say no to Bunov, but. Uh, hundred percent. Yeah, there's no yeah, way I'm saying no to a good Buna. No way at all. But we'll be taking a look at some really good high end stuff. I know uh, Akintoshin is one of those distilleries that's kind of a mixed bag. We'll be looking at them. Spayburn. Mm. I think I think we'll have a good a good time looking at the Spayburn stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the old Pulteney, I think we'll have a good time looking at that. The um, and we've got in the future, future we've got some nice Kregelicky twenty five and a nice uh, uh, Ball Blair eighty three. We'll be looking at it'll, it'll be uh, some pretty fun stuff there. So, For sure, man. Oops. All right, with that, I am going to sign off because I'm. Uh, but, oh, here point. Uh, but I will um, yeah I'll catch you next week and thanks for everybody for hanging out and yeah I'm looking forward to this Deanson show I will have I won't be sitting in this room anymore I'll have the malt studio <laughs> set up and uh, we'll be able to uh, do it justice ma'am I'm just glad you made it in one piece without any more craziness Dude, right it's been a, it's been a trip hopefully since you've already had a lot of bad juju hopefully all the the good GG will now be spreading into your lap. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Telex. Thank you, my friend. Good and karma is what it's all about. Man. Everybody stay safe, be well. Uh, I am dropping a new review on Friday as always, so sub to the channel if you're interested in such things. And, uh, yeah, Telex and I will be live next week, and I'll have a happy hour link posted up soon. All right, brother. All right, thanks. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, peace. All right. Well, hopefully, uh, the uh, whatever happened with the uh, internet connections, hopefully that is better. I didn't. I didn't even take a look. I'm just going to take a quick look and see if, uh, if I see anything on the side because I noticed there was a uh, some issues earlier. Let me just take a quick look at something to see if. Uh, No issues. Uh, let's see. Live outage. Here we go. I just want to see if there's any live outages across the board on anything. I don't really see anything there. I don't know. I'll look later and see. But sorry about that, guys. I thought it might maybe it had something to do with the. Um, you know, they dig fiber. Sometimes they unfortunately make uh, cuts they didn't really mean to. Um, or, you know, somebody hits a tree, knocks over power lines. It, uh, there's all sorts of things that can happen with this stuff. But hopefully everything's okay. I, I didn't uh, notice anything going on. No drama yet. It's just still finishing up work. Ah, good to see you there, Vegas Art. What do you do? And uh, are you drinking anything yet? Probably not if you're still at work. <laughs> if you're allowed to, pull something out. If you're not, don't do it. <laughs> My brother and I can now have a Bunahaven flight with four drams. The 12, the Kabanach, the Choyshek, Aha, and Peter White's sample of Gordon and McPhail's Bunahaven at 60 ABV. Wow, man, that is something. 
Um, my own feeling out of that, if we're just talking flights, I love the 12. Solid, unpeated dram. Everyone should have a Benahaven 12 at some point in their life, in my opinion. I loved it. The Kalbanok, it's a little bit peated, and uh, it reminded me of a dream sickle. It, it had a great nose and finish. I'm sorry, a great nose and palate. The finish is what threw me off on the Kalbanok. I was hoping it would last a little longer. That was my only beef with that particular one. The Choishek Aha, the second version, I liked a lot, lot, lot. It was I'm not sure. I'm not, it's, it's close to being Ugodal level. I'm not sure if it's quite there, but it's really damn close. It's very well done. I liked it a hell of a lot better than the original Choi Check, which is the first release. And it's just a flat Choi Check. There's no smokiness as far as like a. There's no sherry involved in it. It's more of a straightforward in your face. Excuse me, like a Pete. Uh, but it reminded me of like a Lagavulin 8, the, the original Chwechek. The Chwechek Aha, to me, reminded me a little bit more of like an Ugadol. So keep that in mind on the side. Uh, never tried the Peter White sample of the... Uh, I'm sorry. Never tried the Gordon and McPhil uh, uh version at 60. That sounds intriguing. I, I would love to, to sink my teeth in something like that. It's Milano, Rock Island area in Illinois and Iowa. Interesting. Giant geography, super freak nerd. Love it, Atlas. I was like three. I hear you. I was the same way, man. I, I used to, just for fun, I would draw pictures of like Canadian provinces when I was like five. I'm talking like none of it, ter I mean, none of it territory didn't exist back then, but like the Northwest Territories, um, Yukon. Uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, you had to throw that in there. Nova Scotia, I would do the whole thing, man. I would draw just this, just the, just the islands and the and the borders, just for fun. It was just crazy. Uh, Will oxidize old bottle I've had for a few years. Killed the eight. Holland Park eighteen, very nice, man. That's a very beautiful bottle. Wish I could have worked one at work. Yeah, but I work at a hospital, so not likely. Well, thumbs up to you, my friend. You've been dealing with a bunch of shit for the past year and a half, I'm sure, it, no matter what kind of hospital you work at. So I commend you. I salute you. And, and I think you should get hazard pay, to be honest with you, which I know is kind of crazy to think of if you already work in the medical, you know, uh, the medical field. But... It takes some gonads to do to, to do anything in the medical field, especially during the pandemic. Uh, uh, just lost video for about ten seconds, and again now. Well, I'm thinking that these guys at Streamyard are having these guys at Streamyard are having some issues with the streaming. It seems like maybe if it's not, I don't know. But some people are saying that they're not having any issues. He's not infected. <laughs> That's not good. I haven't had it in Holland Park 18, only the 12 and the full volume. You should definitely invest in the 18. 130 ish, I know it's not cheap, but it's well worth the price. Extremely worth the price. It's extremely good. Anyhow, if you can get the old Holland Park 18, it's even better. If you got to get the Viking Pride, it's still good, but you know, just saying. It's always good to get old whiskey if you can get it, unless it's like a lower ABV, then don't bother. Live in a country and have fiber optic. It's rare for me to have internet problems. Yeah. I hear you there, man. If it was seven, eight years ago. Hmm. Born and raised around a hamlet of 250, but in the city for the last 18 and a half years. Now the video and audio are gone like 80% of the time. Back again. I'm sorry, guys, but I think the uh, StreamYard people are having a, an issue. I, I'm going to go ahead and, and end it. Uh, sorry, guys, for the abrupt uh, show, but we'll be back. And uh, usually, this is the only time I've ever had some major problems. I will give feedback to the uh, StreamYard folks just in case it's their issue so that we don't have any more of these types of problems. Uh, 
I was, again, so sorry that I think if, if it's not internet-wide issues, it's probably StreamYard having streaming issues. Uh, apologize for all the, the video, uh, audio things. It's not on my end that I can control, unfortunately. Uh, I do apologize, though, and I'll be giving them feedback. And uh, I'll go ahead and end the show now, but I just want to let you guys know that I really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you don't mind on the side. Uh, if, you, if you can, uh, subscribe if you haven't done it already. And uh, see you guys, hopefully next tuesday and uh maybe we'll have a makeup uh, side show just for a, a chat fun on the side if i can get uh, a little time on, on the on the side to do it with you guys but uh yeah it keeps going away and, and all that but thanks for the uh thanks for the feedback i really appreciate it uh the, those who stuck around and, and hung out through the uh, insanity <laughs> so long for now see you guys next week